Oh. Hello. I'm Imperial Master Jung Soo Park. Um, good to see you. I'm extremely glad to greet you through Zoom. Since we all had such a hard time last year due to COVID-19, I want to start off with some good news. When I first started Atomy, the very first dream that I wanted to achieve was to build an Atomy Center in Iksan. Since I ran the first center in Iksan, what I truly wanted was to make it impressive. I really had a dream of setting up a great center. I started building this center last year when everyone was struggling with the COVID-19 pandemic. As you can see, this building has been in progress since last year. It's a four-story building. There'll be a coffee shop on the first floor. There'll be a meeting space for our Atomy contractors on the second floor. The seminar room will be on the third floor, and the Imperial Master Office will be on the fourth floor. On the fifth floor will be a rooftop terrace. We'll deck out the terrace so that contractors can have barbecues there. And in spring, we'll set it up very nicely so we can drink tea, have meetings, and make a very pleasant setting. This wonderful center will be finished this year. The chairman built a great headquarters for us. So as a contractor, I want to pay it forward to other contractors by making a truly great center. That's why I'm building it. What you see here is the Imperial Master Office. It's currently still under construction. In order to construct this center, I kept delaying receiving my imperial promotion. This year, once the center is complete, with all the finishing touches, you can have a look. Next to the imperial office, there's a great space with an open roof. I really love this space. We're going to plant trees there too. When it rains, you can see the raindrops falling. When it's sunny, it'll light up the space. When it snows, you can see the snow falling. This amazing space will be next to the Imperial office. But since it's not finished just yet, I asked people to make a photoshopped picture of me standing there drinking tea in this space. As I imagined drinking tea there, I was reminded of the past. Memories from my early days flashed through my mind. I thought of my struggles back then. Back in the day, my first job was at a school. I enjoyed working there. People said that working at a school was a very suitable job for a woman. And they asked why I wanted to leave such a good job. But I spent my monthly pay from the school very freely. Within two or three days of payday, my entire paycheck was used up. So I was always short on cash. I hated this life of scarcity. I wondered how much longer I would have to live in debt. I really wanted to make a lot of money. I dreamt of spending money on whatever I wanted. So I quit working at the school and used my severance pay to open a pizza parlor. As soon as I left the school and set up the pizza parlor, I got swindled and went out of business. I also tried running a skincare shop. After that, I tried selling books and repeated this difficult life over and over again. Finally, with all of my debts, my last attempt was running a failed duck soup restaurant. 
As soon as I set it up, the avian flu hit. In the aftermath of that avian flu, the restaurant racked up heavy debt and failed. That's where the failed duck soup restaurant used to be. The first center was at that failed duck soup restaurant. By chance, while running the restaurant, I got to use some Atomy cosmetics. When I ran the skincare clinic, I used extremely expensive imported cosmetics. I used to really distrust Korean cosmetics. Even back then, Korean cosmetics were really poor quality. They felt really heavy on your skin and were not very absorbent. So personally, I really disliked Korean cosmetics. When I first tried Atomy Cosmetics, I wondered how an unknown brand could be so absorbent. Atomy's moisturizing cream was also extremely light, and I loved it so much. But the price was unbelievably low. So I liked it so much that I gained the confidence to sell them to anyone, anywhere. I thought that I could really sell these cosmetics well. So I volunteered to sell the cosmetics, and that's how the chairman came to do his first seminar at my failed duck soup restaurant. But actually, at that first seminar, the chairman had almost nothing except his $2,800 van. In fact, he told the people who came to that first seminar that his entire fortune were the four sheets of paper in his hand. His dreams were his fortune. In fact, he said that this company will be worth $1 billion. He said that the 17 people at that seminar would become the richest and pay the most taxes in Iksan. On top of all that, he said that the company would go global. I didn't think much of it back then. I just wanted to sell these cosmetics. I wanted to sell these good and cheap cosmetics, and I wanted to make around $5,000 a month selling them. That's how I started working with the chairman. I came to find out later that he was extremely passionate and warm-hearted. I saw his passion while watching him lecture. He gave such passionate lectures that his shirt was soaked through with sweat. He was that passionate in his lectures. And there were times when he was so passionate that he actually almost fell off the stage. Sometimes he lectured with a nosebleed, and several times his eyes were bloodshot. I was moved to the point of tears when I saw that. When his nose bled, it just kept bleeding and bleeding, and the blood just kept flowing out. So to help stop his nose from bleeding, we'd block his nose with a tissue, but the blood would just keep coming out. His lectures would get delayed because of his nosebleeds. This really happened several times. So my heart started to gradually open towards the chairman. When we held seminars, he would bring rice cakes and bread. What kind of chairman does that? He said it was for those that skipped meals to come from far away. I couldn't understand him at first. But bit by bit, I began feeling deeply impressed by him. So my heart started opening. He would also send us individual texts on our commission day. He told us how much we got and that we worked hard. He always encouraged us through these texts, saying, let's make more next time. In some ways, the chairman was always our sponsor. And at that time, neither we nor the chairman had anything. We were all poor, but we worked together as one. 
Even now, you may be struggling and empty-handed. But if we come together as one, nothing is impossible. What did we have back then? We had nothing, but we came this far. That's thanks to our hearts. If we share with each other like this, there's nothing we can't do. Once, one of our contractors was hospitalized. I went to the hospital, but he said that he couldn't afford to get treatment from the hospital. The chairman paid all his fees and even found a caretaker for him. So he was able to get treatment. But at the time, the chairman didn't have that much money. I heard that the chairman had paid the contractor's hospital fees. When I went to visit the contractor at the hospital after working late, it occurred to me as I left the hospital that even if this company failed, I really wanted to work with this chairman. Even if it failed, I wanted to do it. I made my resolution like this. I started off simply intending to sell cosmetics, but I became resolved to work with him, no matter what the outcome. In the same way, if sponsors and partners are closely connected, they can stand strong against whatever adversities they face. Together is the key. In some ways, this business is linked to human relationships. The first thing I did after making my resolution was to get rid of the TV in my house. I love watching dramas and movies, but I thought that I couldn't give my all with a TV at home, so I got rid of it. And then I stopped doing my favorite sports and hobbies. I also stopped meeting my friends for chats. I decided not to do anything other than add to me. After this decision, I reorganized my entire life. Since my kids were young, looking after them was my biggest problem. I thought of it as just another price to pay. I couldn't do atomy while looking after my kids. I couldn't bring them around with me while doing atomy. Looking back, what I did was to keep in touch with them. I kept in touch with them and explained why I had to do this work and what kind of house we'd live in. My kids told me what happened at school and who they talked to. We never fell out of touch. So, though I did not spend much time with them, they grew up properly, thanks to always staying in touch. I think you need to pay the price like this no matter what. That resolution will ultimately speed up your success. Most people who do atomy don't have that clear resolution. So I think that it's extremely important to make that resolution for yourself. After making this resolution, it's important that you clearly know about the products since it's a distribution company. Fortunately, thanks to having run a skincare shop, I knew cosmetics well. I knew exactly why Atomy Cosmetics were good. I had to make sure to sell and experience Atomy products for myself. You need plenty of time to really know the product inside out. So, with my ample experience and knowledge, I took the cosmetics directly to share with a very close friend of mine. But she said this, Tons of salespeople like you visit me every day. This is how I responded. I just wanted to cry right then and there. I couldn't really say anything. My pride was so hurt sitting there, but I couldn't cry. I packed up all of my cosmetics. Without shedding a tear, 
I put the catalog away and I opened the door to leave that friend's store. The moment I left, I started crying. When I got in my car, I was crying so much to the point where I couldn't drive. Ultimately, what I thought while crying was whether I would give up after getting that kind of response. I was sure about Atomy products' high quality. That friend writing me off as just a salesperson made me even more determined not to quit. I told myself, I'll succeed in the end. Just you wait and see. With this determination, I worked even harder. I think that the more rejections you face, the closer you get to success. When we get rejected by someone, we think that it's a 100% no. But people's minds can change. When I ran the restaurant, an insurance company employee kept trying to sign me up. I know a whole lot of people who do insurance. So I rejected that person every day when he visited. But I realized that my mind changed. His sincerity changed my mind gradually, each time. At the start, 90% of me said no. The next time, it was 60%. Then after, it was 50%. After that, it was 30%. The next time, somehow, only 1% of my mind said no. So, since my mind had almost completely changed, I would actually take his offer the next time he came to visit. So, I found out that the meaning of no can definitely change. When you go to someone, don't think of their no as 100%. If you sincerely persist in visiting them, that person's no will definitely change. So it's extremely important that you consistently and repeatedly visit them for this work. We often say that the solution is on the ground. Our work is about being on the ground. If you don't do this on-the-ground work consistently, you'll have a hard time after reaching your mastership because you'll lack the necessary grit. Let's say you reach a mastership. So you get there. So you're there and your current mastership will reveal how hard you've worked up to now. When you first start working, on the ground, you need to do it for at least more than a year. This is in order for you to have an easier time later. I wasn't even expecting a mastership. The chairman said back then, in the beginning, this work is about promoting the products like mad. Second, don't miss the seminars. So I really promoted the products and attended seminars like mad. I never missed a seminar and just did this work repeatedly. I made $5,000 as a sales master and more than 10 k as a diamond master. Getting to Sharon Rose Master and Star Master took a while, but starting from Royal Master, I sped up. I was the first royal, then crown master. I was the very first imperial master. So later on, I was ahead, even as a royal master. You have to work as hard as you did when you were a diamond master. So if you're a royal master, the way to maintain your mastership is to work as if you were a Sharon Rose master. If you grow complacent with your new mastership, your group will gradually fall apart. 
please do this business more wisely. If you dream vividly, your dreams will come true. The Atomy Center was what I wanted more than anything in the world. It'll be finished this year. I also wanted to make my children's dreams come true. Now that I've achieved all of my dreams, I couldn't ask for more. I achieved my simple dream, which I mentioned earlier. Of course, I was scared on my journey. At the beginning, I was truly scared. But I think it was the same for the chairman. It was so scary. We were scared together. We struggled together. But the chairman wrote something called flying blind. He said that the scariest thing is your present reality. He's saying that it's scarier if your present reality becomes your tomorrow. If your days ahead are exactly the same as your present reality, it's scarier to grow complacent with this reality. So we must not become complacent with our present reality and go forward with courage. He always told us to have courage and go forth even if we were scared. Everyone, you must have courage even if you're scared. If you are struggling with your present reality, you must have courage and go forward one step at a time. I wish for you to have courage and to really, truly dream vividly. I truly wish that you can fulfill your dream life as I conclude my lecture today. Thank you. Thank you. 좋아요 눌러주세요